What's up, Big Boss Babes? It's your girl, Big Boss Drea, and I'm back with another video. Okay, okay, okay. I know I haven't shot a video all 2021, but baby, let me tell you, having a baby, making a baby, takes a lot of out of you. You know, I've had my ups and downs stemming from last year to this year, but we ain't about to hear, talk about none of that. We are here to talk about being single and pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wanted to do this video because I actually watched a lot or, or when I first realized that I was going to be single and pregnant, I went on YouTube to kind of get a feel for what would be going on, like how, how, how other women were getting through it, like what would happen, because I knew I wasn't the only one. And everybody's story was really sad. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing or that's a good thing or whatever the case may be. But I didn't want it to be my story. So I had to wrap my mind around being single and pregnant. And now that I feel like um, I'm closer to really understanding what it's like to be single and pregnant, um, I am currently 33 weeks. So Miss Parker will be here in seven weeks, give or take. Um, now that I have a better understanding and I've going through the motions with my baby Zeddy, um, I wanted to share with someone else, uh, another woman that may be out there and wondering, okay, if I have to do this by myself, what is that gonna look like? Or if I'm choosing to have this baby, what does that look like if me and my baby daddy <laughs> um, choose to co-parent and not have a relationship together? It's possible, it's doable. You just gotta be in the right mind space. So, um, I want to start by saying this is not going to be a baby daddy bash session. That's just not who I am. Um, my baby daddy is very private. I respect his privacy. I respect him for being a private person. I am more open and sharing and because I believe sharing your story helps other people, you know, grow as well. So don't think that you have to get the baby daddy tea because that's not what's about to happen. <laughs> Um, we are just going to talk a little bit about like how to wrap your mind as a woman um, around being single and pregnant and learning how to co-parent through pregnancy because I am a strong believer that co-parenting should start at pregnancy. It should not start once the baby get here. It should not start uh, once DNA tests are done and it should not start once baby is two years old, three years old, you get out your feelings. Co-parenting starts when... It, you get that pregnancy test and it says that you having a baby like you shouldn't feel like no woman should feel like she's doing it by herself just because a lot of men tend to think that oh well you know um the baby is not here yet so how at me when the baby get here no because i still have to live with this baby in my belly every single day so you should have to live you know with the with the same type of responsibility you know but obviously in a different way so if you win all that first thing i want you to do oh we kind of late in the video for me to be telling y'all this but go ahead and hit that subscribe button because if you made it this far you want to know what's going on so i think you need to go ahead and subscribe get this video a thumbs up because i'm about to drop some gems on y'all <sighs> okay y'all so i didn't take no notes because i wanted this to be raw and real and genuine and from the heart so i'm gonna start from the beginning this is a judgment free zone don't don't come on here judging me and i'm not gonna judge y'all because one thing i learned throughout this process is that you can't judge nobody not even yourself um but so i met this guy or whatever um last year and i was outside sis i'm not gonna lie i was outside having fun we was having fun and i wind up pregnant it is what it is and what's so crazy is the week before um i found out i was already pregnant me and my mom had went to dinner or lunch and i was like mama you know what i'm 30 years old um if i don't have a baby at this point i won't be mad now i don't know how i'm gonna feel at 40 but as of now these men are not qualifying pull in my book so i was just like you know if i don't have a baby then i just don't have a baby like i, I had kind of came to terms with just being a single woman and living my life right 
but I also struggled in my spirit with what's next for me. So being outside, being in these streets, you know, it's fun. Don't get me wrong, don't get it twisted, but I did that my whole 20s. I, I lived my 20s the way that I wanted to and I'm so grateful that I got to experience traveling and living in different places and just getting a job, quitting a job, getting a degree, to hell with that degree you know what i'm saying i went through all of those motions and discovering who i am so that played a very very valuable part in me coming a becoming a mother because i feel like i healed myself i feel like i learned myself i feel like i grew into the woman that i wanted to be um you know I, i'm about 30 years old in my own place got my own making my own money so being pregnant wasn't the worst thing that could happen to me, even though it was un unexpected. So, nonetheless, back to finding out that I was pregnant. So I told my mom that a week later, my baby daddy was like, um, you pregnant? And I was like, no, I'm not. My period's coming. You know how weird it is, lady. You like, uh, boob sore. That means my, my period about to come. Like, hello? No period. So... I'm like, okay, let me just take a test to make sure so I'm not over here mind boggling my brain. You know what I'm saying? So I go get a test, laying on the couch watching Game of Thrones. Oop, gotta pee. Okay, so I get up, I go take the pregnancy test. Baby, as soon as the pee hit the stick, it said, you're pregnant. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I put this stick on the counter. I went lay back on the couch. I finished watching Game of Thrones. I said, I'm going to try this again in the morning. Tried it again in the morning. I don't even know if the pee touched the stick. It might have just got a, wa a waft. <laughs> um, and it said that I was pregnant. So I immediately was like, this, this, this Negro was right. So <laughs> call my baby daddy. And this is where the poop hit the fan. I call my baby daddy and his first response was, I want to choose my words wisely because I don't want nobody to judge nobody in a situation, right? Um, but his first response was not excitement like I thought it was going to be because I thought that it was something that he wanted that I didn't want, but okay. Um... And so in that moment, I let him know who you decide to be throughout this process is who you decide to be. As for me and my house, this is not the worst thing that could happen to me. I have family, I have love, I have support. I have 18 nieces and nephews, my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers, you know what I'm saying? I have family that would love and embrace a child. And having a support system is more than half the battle when having a baby, I believe, because you never know what a man is gonna do. You never know what he's gonna think or feel or how it's gonna happen. So let's just say that conversation with him did not go well, did not go as expected, but I was at peace with, I'm about to have a baby. Like, even though it's not what I expected, I'm about to have a baby and there's a possibility that I might have to do this by myself. And I think a lot of women need to come to terms with that when you do decide to keep a baby or get rid of a baby. Make sure that it's your decision. Don't let no man, don't let your mama, don't let your daddy, don't let your best friend, don't let nobody persuade your decision to have your baby. Because at the end of the day, it's your body and your baby. And you're going to be stuck or, or or not even stuck but it's always that that child is going to always be your responsibility so if you feel like you're in a good place mentally physically financially emotionally to have your baby have your baby i'm not judging nobody if they decide to have an abortion if you feel like abortion is right for you have an abortion don't bring a baby into a world where you're going to resent that child but i also just my two cents on that is Abortion is not the solution to irresponsibility. If you were being irresponsible, but you 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 was having fun and you knew what could happen, that's not a reason to harm your body or to get rid of a baby um, because, you know, oops, and then that's your first 
solution is to go have an abortion and then you five for six abortion oh, that's none of my business that ain't none of my business nonetheless so like i said i decided to keep my baby and we didn't talk actually me and my baby daddy we didn't talk for a little bit after that um because i think he kind of had to wrap his mind around the situation as well as i i gave him his space to you know realize like Big drag gonna do what big drag gonna do, <laughs> period. Um, and we had to come back together, and um, it, it, it has been a, 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 a emotional and a relationship roller coaster since then. Um, because we were still getting to know each other, we barely knew each other when I got pregnant, so it was a process of both of us getting to know each other, and realizing this is like a real life thing i don't think that it became super super real to me until maybe like the end of last year beginning of this year january january was really really tough for me because i realized okay well he was kind of dating other people i'm stuck with a belly and a baby and i just took january to just embrace my pregnancy and embrace what motherhood really meant because you don't really know how your life is going to change until you actually can see it feel it growing inside of you and then it's like no this 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 this, this, this is real like <laughs> this is a real situation so january I, I i just i just laid in the bed and i watched tv and i cried and i prayed and i talked to my friends and my family and my loved ones and i just really had to take the time to wrap my mind around it and 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 wrap my mind around okay well if we're not in a relationship and he's seeing other people what does that mean for our baby what does that mean um for co-parenting now listen I believe that a man has a responsibility to a woman if he gets her pregnant. I'm not one of the people that's like, oh well, if that nigga, um, if he want to go and do whatever, he, I, I take care of my baby by myself. That I, no, 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 no. That was never my solution. It was like, okay, I'm gonna hold you accountable. And I chose to have a midwife, and you know, or whether I had insurance, I would have to pay out of pocket. So I feel like I'm growing the child the least a man should do especially during pregnancy is make sure that you have the things that you need um, as a woman to be able to have a healthy and safe and positive pregnancy like you shouldn't have to stress and worry about damn am i gonna have pampers am i gonna have a crib am i gonna have this am i gonna have that like that is still part of his responsibility whether y'all are in a relationship or not so having that mature conversation takes a lot out of you and that's why it's so important to be to know yourself and know who you are when you decide to become a mother because a lot of the times the guy may not be where you are mentally or where you are financially or where you are in a in relationship or y'all may not want the same things so it take it took rather in my personal experience many 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 conversations of one kind of disarming him and letting him know i don't have any expectations of you besides you taking care of your child like you don't owe me nothing i'm not asking you to pay my bills i'm not asking you to you know i still work i still do what i can do um you know to take care of myself financially but i it's going to be hard for me to do that on top of trying to take care of a baby right so i need you to contribute it took many conversations and um you know so a, a, a little bit of drama <laughs> not gonna lie, to get to the point where okay we understand that we're not going to work together at, in a relationship my biggest thing was respect and i always want you to respect me as the mother of your child because i'm always going to respect you as the father of, of of my child and I know when emotions are involved in a relationship and in co-parenting and parenting in general, you know, it's it's so easy to feel like, oh, well, he owed me this and he did and I and I deserve this and he gonna do and try to control the situation. But in reality, baby or no baby, you can't control nobody else. You gotta let that person live their life, 
go on their journey, learn what they need to learn, do what they need to do for them. And then you just have to be ready for when the situation comes back full circle and you learn your lessons as well and grow as well to be able to sit and have a healthy conversation about your child. Like, I think that is my ultimate goal is to just be able to have a healthy co-parenting relationship with my baby daddy. Who knows what will happen in the future in regards to if we'll be in a relationship or not. I don't hate him. I don't think he hates me. I think we're just still learning each other. So the baby isn't even here yet. So we don't know what the future holds, right? Nobody, nobody knows. But at the same time, we need to be able to coexist in the same room, in the same space, on the phone, going out to eat, learning each other, knowing each other, like how are we gonna raise our daughter together? That's so important. So when you take emotions and feelings and history and past out of it, and I think that's the one benefit of like, having a baby on one day you get to know somebody, um, <laughs> is that it's not such an emotional investment um into the relationship like right now it's just we are literally still getting to know each other like i had a client who told me you know that that they didn't have they were married for 10 years before they had a baby and within the year or two of them having a baby they got a divorce because they wasn't on the same page so you just never know and you cannot judge nobody's situation but my biggest advice and my biggest takeaway is just to like i said to know yourself know who you are before you decide to have a baby, do the work on yourself. Heal so that your children don't have to heal from you. And that was a meme that I saw on, on Instagram, but the accuracy is so head on because I think a lot of children are born into situations where you probably thought that a baby was going to keep this man or he thought that the baby was going to keep you. And then now y'all have to deal with the complexity of co-parenting which could be really hard because everybody we all got a pass you know what i'm saying we all have like i can tell you this with my baby daddy um i i come from a big family a, a very large family just within my family we have 18 and miss parker will be number 19 of the grandkids and um my my, my parent i'm the youngest of six seven eight I got stepsisters, stepbrothers, half brothers. It's a lot of us, okay? And my mom is the youngest of nine children, so I have a plethora of cousins. So I come from a, a, a large family of love and compassion and forgiveness. And, you know, you don't always get to pick your family, but you always have to love them and, you know, accept them for who they are. Unless, you know, okay, there's exceptions to that. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I come from. Support understanding my mom talking us through things my mom you know being there for us and I, I can't remember a time my mom wasn't there for us and um with my baby daddy he didn't come from that and so i had to learn to respect that and to understand that being raised on love and being raised on survival are two totally different type of lifestyles and there's nothing wrong with either but trying to make a lover understand a survivor and a survivor understand a lover can be really hard because sometimes you know the survivor has already closed their hearts off or closed their minds off to certain things and then as a lover you're trying to see the positive in everything and it's like girl what is what's wrong with you like no this is this how it's supposed to be or this is how this is so like i said it has it, it had it it has taken taken and i'm pretty sure it will take many 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 um conversations and more conversations on how to raise our child and just be healthy parents for each other for him for me um for the baby and ultimately it's all about the baby because i have always kind of been a girl especially not been in a relationship throughout my 20s that'll be like i put a dude on ice real quick like that ain't no problem that ain't no problem but when it comes to having a baby, you got to take yourself out of it. You got to take self, self feelings and self thoughts out of it and think what's best for my baby. And I think that's just the hardest part for a lot of people because it's so much emotional involvement and you feel like somebody is doing something to you personally. But like I said, once you take yourself out of it and you say you, you're able to have the conversation of, okay, 
I get it. I ain't trying to finesse you. I ain't trying to press you about no baby, about being a, not about no baby, about being in a relationship. I just want you to take care of your responsibilities because look, once this baby drop, I plan on still being fine. Okay, so if if, if Miss Parker <laughs> need a stepdad, <laughs> no, I'm just playing, y'all. Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I guess I also just have that confidence and I have my mom to thank. My mom is so wise and so compassionate and so forgiving that she has definitely been the one to guide me into understanding a man like him because I think my dad is kind of like him, a man that, you know, was raised on you got to get it how you live like ain't nobody giving you no handout nobody's you know doing doing nothing for you whatever you 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 eat you kill or whatever you kill you eat whatever you know the case may be so and it's nothing wrong with that that's a hustler you know and one thing that i love and respect about my baby daddy is that when held accountable <laughs> he takes care of his business he takes care of he you know it's nothing that i have asked him for while we on good terms <laughs> um for the baby that he has not came through for me on and i respect that so much because there's so many men out here that won't do just because they won't do it not because they don't have it but just because well i don't mess with you like that so i don't mess with that baby like that y'all go figure it out and you know if if you're in a situation like that just realize that you cannot control nobody and give them time and space to take in what you have said and and make a decision for themselves because if you do have to do this journey by yourself and go through this journey by yourself then you're just gonna have to put on your big girl panties and do it by yourself it's not impossible you won't be the first you won't be the last but if you do decide to co-parent the goal is healthy communication cry to your friends cry to your mama dog is behind out or her behind out to them but when it comes to you and that other person sitting at the table on the phone, it needs to be strictly about the baby. What do I need from you? What do you need from me? Um, and how can we coexist? Even if that means bringing in somebody else, you know, my mom or your mom or whoever to, um, you know, help the situation out. Like everybody's situation is going to be different, but healthy communication is top priority healthy communication not healthy relationship not healthy um 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 sex not healthy none of that figure out what works for y'all but keep in mind that the 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 end goal is i for your baby to know that her mom his or her mom and dad loves me and created a safe space for your baby where your baby knows that I'm loved unconditionally on both sides. Your baby knows that that's my dad and my dad loves me and that's my mom and my mom loves me. Whether we're together or separate, these are my people. These are my folks and we can coexist in the same room and be happy. We can go out to eat or go to, you know, that's personal preference, but I feel like that's what it, that that's just the way that I visualize, you know, um, co-parenting is being able to, 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 to coexist in the same space and not and it not be toxic and not be about a relationship i don't know what'll happen when me or him get in a real relationship um my ultimate thing is respect i never let nobody my my significant other or whoever i'm with disrespect him or think that they are parker's dad or whatever the case may be and i expect the same from him don't let nobody else come up in our family because we're family at this point don't like nobody should be able to come and talk to me crazy i'm always respect who you with as long as they respect who i'm with and it's too much going on in these streets for my baby or anybody's baby to be around somebody and you don't know who they are what they about what they got going on especially little girls absolutely not we're gonna make sure that uh it's airtight around here period because i tell people by my child let's be clear <laughs> okay so i think that is enough for today if y'all have any questions or you know just want to talk or vent or whatever the case may be drop me a message in the comments follow me on instagram um at house of drea andrea 
I'm sorry, at House of Andrea, A-N-D-R-E-Y-A. -E I'll leave all that information in the box below. Um, please, please, please subscribe to my channel. I will be dropping more videos. I am going on maternity leave in April. Miss Parker will be here in May. So I'm gonna be around. I'm gonna be around. I'm just happy that I was able to get back to a good place um, and figuring out who I am with my with my with my unborn baby. Um, and I just hope the same for y'all. I hope you know somebody got something out of this where they can hold their head up high. Um, enjoy enjoy thoroughly enjoy your pregnancy enjoy every kick bump hump punch uppercut because sis <laughs> it'd be a lot going on when you're growing a human but enjoy your pregnancy don't let nobody ruin your pregnancy don't let nobody tell you this is what you shouldn't be doing or discourage you or tell you that you can't do it you can do it you could do it by yourself you could do it with help you could do it with support you could do it with no support Know yourself. Know yourself. Know what you're capable of. Be able to pull yourself, because that's life. Being able to pull yourself out of the gutter, out of the ground, out of whatever, and making your journey what you want it to be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate you for watching. Share with a friend. And bye, my big boss babe.